For this video, we're going to see how to take a basic code sculptor template and start your program once you have kind of an idea of what you're going to do. So here's the steps that we're going to use. We're going to go through these steps together. I'm going to start by clicking on code sculptor. And this basic template has a lot of things that we want to keep. So I'm not going to just delete everything. I'm going to keep a lot of things here. We can change what we need to change, take out what we need to take out, and add in what we need to add. So let's start with step one. Fill out our comment block at the top. Now all of the programs, whenever I've given you a template, we've had a comment block at the top, and it's been three things, programmer, program, and date. So that's just a good thing to put at the top of every program. It's your basic information there. When I look at my template, I see that there's five lines of comment block at the top, and I don't need all of those but I am going to keep one. So I'm going to highlight right here, press delete, and just start with the first one, which is with programmer or your name. The next thing would be the program name. This one is your ordering program, part one. And then the date. And I like the date because it's kind of like an archival thing. How long ago did you create this? If I modify it later, I can update the date, that kind of thing. So it's just a good tracking mechanism. So today's date. Those are the three things that I like to include in a comment block across the top. I would encourage you to do so and add anything else that you would like to add. So comment block across the top, that's the first thing in our template. Step number two is to import modules. Now you can see that import simple GUI is already there. That's one reason I like this template. It has things that we want to keep. You might use uh, random at some point. If you think you're going to use random at some point, you can go ahead and import it now. Um, even if you don't use it and you have it there, it won't hurt anything. Then you're ready for it just in case. That's step number two. Step number three, create a section for your global variables. Now you might recall from the other templates that you've used that right after the imports is where we have our global variables. There's one here, the message variable. We're not going to use it. So I'm going to basically delete it and just change it to a comment for my global variables. So I'm going to set aside a section for them. And then when I know what they're going to be, I'll come back and add in those global variables. But I have, I have a section ready and it's sectioned off at near the top. That will remind me of where they go and that I need to do them. And so that's step number three. Step number four, set up your user interface at the bottom of your code, and that means specifically putting in your buttons. Now you might add other things like labels and such, but specifically you have some things that are there that you need to keep there, and then the buttons that you need to add. So you have to have an idea in your head or on a piece of paper or somewhere, what is your user interface gonna look like? How many buttons, at least that part, how many buttons do I need? So I have an example here earlier in our program instructions. And you can see for buttons, I've got two buttons. Now we've always started off with like maybe one and then we add buttons as we go. And that's a really good technique to use too, using the iterative development process. So you always want at least one button. If you know you're going to have two buttons, you could go ahead and start with that as well. And then just add others as we go. So I'm going to look down here at this last part. And this is a really important part that comes with this basic template in Code Sculptor. And that's why I don't want to delete it because I need these lines of code. I just want to modify them. So this first one on line 21 sets up my frame. And this is really important because you don't have a frame. You don't have a user interface without this. And right now it's going to say home. I can, I can keep it home or I can change it to what the program actually is. And I'll show you when we actually run the program where this displays. So you can change home. We never really have talked about doing that, but you can. And then this is the size of your frame right here. This is a really important thing to note because you can change the size of your frame. 300 wide by 200 deep, that's the default. And sometimes that's great. But as, as I'm adding in images or if I have a lot of text, that's not going to be big enough. So we can start it at this size and always know that you can come back and change it. So instead of like just letting the text run off the screen or you can't see the pictures. When things are, are looking like they're not going to fit, then come right here and change the size. 
Now there's already one button right here. I know I'm gonna have two. I'm not gonna delete this. I'm just going to change it to match what I need. My first button was my cookie orders. And you can, you're not gonna use the words cookie orders because you're gonna have them order something else. But whatever you want it to say, this is what displays on the button. I have to link this button to a function. I don't have any functions yet, but I can right here think of the name I'm gonna use for that function. And if you remember our convention, our naming convention from last week, we talked about functions having verb names so that I won't mix them up with nouns that would be variables. So I'm gonna call this one get orders. Then I like to make everything the same size, so I put 200 there, so the button kind of fills up that space and looks all nice and even. If I wanna add another button, I just press enter and I'm gonna type the code to add another button. And what do I want to display? I'm gonna have it say start over as two words because that text in quotation marks can have a space, but my variable name is gonna be start over with no space. And once again, I'm gonna do size 200 so it's nice and uniform. I must keep this next one right here. My draw function will not ever be executed if I don't have this line of code. So it's really important. And then the same thing, if I don't have frame.start, then nothing happens. So I definitely wanna keep these, don't delete them, and they need to be the last lines of code. So I'm not gonna ever put anything below frame.start, it won't get there. <laughs> All right, so we just did um, this step six, I'm oh, sorry, we just did step four, set up your user interface with the buttons. Now for step five, for every button I have, I need to have a function as well. And I can do a, I can kind of start that function even without any code by using the word pass. So if I come back here and I'm looking at my user interface, I know I have two buttons and I have two functions, get orders and start over. Now up here, I'm gonna have my functions. I'm gonna change this comment instead of a handler for mouse click because we've never really used it like that. We've always called it event handler functions. And then instead of, I, I have a function here, instead of deleting it, let's just use it and make some changes. My first function is going to be get orders. So I just change it. I can take out the code and put the word pass. I'm gonna do the same thing for my second function, which is start over. So def start over and the word pass. So I've got my buttons. I've got my functions that go with those buttons. Everything matches. Okay, and that's step five. Okay, for step six, I wanna modify the draw function to display your text. So kind of like earlier, what I needed to know how many buttons I have, I have to think of it, what is my, my canvas gonna look like when I run it, at least at the beginning, because I know I can add to this as well as I add more things to my code. But at the very beginning, um, what do I want it to look like? And you can see here from these examples that I have three lines of text. Now this first time only has two lines, but then I have three. I know that one of these is probably just the empty string. Total of three lines of text and I can use them for different things. So in my draw, this is where all my text goes. I already have one line here, so why retype it? Why delete it? I'm just gonna use it and change it. Now we haven't used message as a variable. Instead, we tend to use line one, line two, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna change message to line one. Then I've got my position right here. I like to start at 50 because that means it's gonna be 50 over from the edge. So not too far over, but just a little bit to give me some space. So I like to go 50 down as well. So the first one, think about that as your X value. The second one is your Y value. How far over, how far down. So I like 50, 50, it just kind of puts it there in the corner with a little bit of space around it. But that's a personal choice. So you can certainly choose to put your text wherever you would like. 48 is just way too big. It takes up a whole lot of the, the frame. So I'm gonna change my size to 24. That's my typical size, but that's a personal choice as well. So you can go bigger, you can go smaller. And then of course you need some kind of a color. And this is something that you can always change later, but you need to start with something. Now I know I'm gonna have two more lines, so I'm just gonna copy this, paste it, and make some changes. So 
Every line needs a different variable and a different position. So if I have them all at 50-50, they're going to overlap each other, and I will not be able to read them. So how far down do I need to go? Well, if my text is size 24, I need it to go at least 24 past 50 or 74. I might go a little bit more than that, just so I have some breathing room in between the lines. So maybe I want to go like an even 30. So if I, and that's a personal choice, but that's, that's the thinking behind it. So I'm going to like basically add this number to this number and then go a little bit more every time for a new line, I'm going to go down. So the next one would be 80 and then it would be 110 and so on and so forth. You can change the colors. You can keep them all the same. Right now, we just want to get the program started. So I'm going to keep them all white, but that's something I can think about later on as I want my program to look nice is do I want to do something with the colors? And what I did here, the reason that you see different colors this year is I used a variable for the color. That's something I did later on, you know, not at the beginning when I'm just wanting to get things going. All right, so that is line is step number six. We modified the draw function to display your text. Okay, now that I have a draw function, I know that all of the variables in the draw function need to be global. So the next step is to declare your global variables, which right now are just the line variables. I might have more than that. I don't know yet until I'm adding in my code, but if I come to other things that have to be global, I can make them global. But I know that line one, line two, and line three, because they're in draw, they have to be global. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to declare them all. These all happen to be strings. So I'm gonna make them all strings. I don't have any numbers, that would be like a count. And for this program, I don't have any pictures. I just have line variables. Okay, so now that's step number seven. Now step number eight, assign initial values to these global variables. So you have to think, when I first run this program, what do I want to display on the form? Do I want it to be empty? Or do I want something to you know, show up like a title? And on my example, this first slide right here, this first picture is when I first run it. So my title would be Jones Bakery, order your cookies for line one and line two, and I left line three empty. Now you can make your, your initial values anything you want. So this is just an example. Uh, you could use all three lines. You could use only one line. That's really gonna be up to you. But these are your, your basic instructions, kind of like your title slide. That's gonna be your initial values. So for me, uh, line one, I wanted it to say Jones Bakery. And for line two, I wanted it to say order your cookies. And then I left line three as the empty string. All right, so that is step eight. I assigned initial values to global variables. Now the last thing is let's try running the code and making any changes that we might need to make. So it should run. And I can see here's the size of my form. This is 300 by 200. Here's my two buttons. And this is why they're all the same size. It's because I used that 200 at the end. And this is what displays up here where it would have said home. Now it says order program. So that's what that part did right there. And I got it kind of centered nicely on the screen. If I wanted to make it wider, I know what I need to do. If I needed to change something on my buttons, but this, before you do any code, you can just make your user interface look the way you want it to look. So if I wanted to make any changes now, big or smaller, adding things, you know, what modifying things, this is what I would do right now. And that is step nine. So I've run the code. I make sure that I don't have errors to this point and make any changes that I need. So I don't have to worry about the user interface. Then I can just worry about the code.